Hello again. This is Trish Triumpho Sullivan for Painting Art 6 A and B, and we're going to talk briefly about your canvas. So we have two, let's get started right away. We have two different um, classes here, right? We have an oil class and a watercolor class, and you need two different things, types of things to paint on. Um, so for watercolor, Watercolor, you need watercolor paper. I'd like you to get at least a 140 pound cold pressed. All right, you can get it in sheets or a pad. Um, this is what 140 pound looks like, right? I'm gonna bring it up close. You can see there's some texture on it. This particular one is arches, so it has a watermark. You might be able to actually see the watermark here. Um, and you can see that there's some texture on it. One side has more texture than the other. All right, so this is just a strip off the end. Um, I use these in, to, uh, to do practice uh, color testing on. So you always save your scraps of watercolor paper. Um, I like to paint, so here's a, here's a 300 pound watercolor paper. Look how thick it is, right? Makes, right? So you can kind of see the difference in the quality of 140 pound to 300 pound. 300 pound is almost like cardboard, right? It's thick. And these are cold pressed papers. Um, this is what professionals would be using is 300 pounds, right? It's nice and thick, it's good quality paper. 140 pound or even a 90, 90 pound is really thin and you won't have as good results. So you wanna make sure you try to get 140 pound. Um, this is, I think this is a 90 pound, right? So you can feel, you can see the difference in thickness, right, to this. And maybe you can even see it if I kind of put them side by side. You're going to see that there's one's thicker than the other. Um, so good quality, good quality paper is really, really important. Um, Arches is the brand I use. You don't need to use that brand, but you do need to get 140 pound cold pressed. Lots of different, lots of different types of watercolor paper out there. Cold pressed is what you want. <clears throat> That's going to give you the best results. When people talk to me and say, hey, I, I've tried doing this, I don't have good results. It's usually because the quality of the paint is poor and the quality of the paper is poor. So you need to have decent materials to have good, you know, professional type results. Um, and so that's really important. So watercolor uses watercolor paper. Oils use canvas. All right, so canvas, and, and the reason I had it in quotes at the beginning, canvas can be used to describe any surface that you're painting on. So for both watercolors and oils, a lot of times people say, this is my canvas, right? This is my canvas, even though it's not really canvas. Oils, you can paint on a lot of different things. You can paint on canvas, you can paint on wood panels, or you can paint on cardboard. In fact, let me go grab a piece of cardboard really quick because this is important. Okay, so cardboard, right? Um, regular piece of cardboard, right? You can just see that it's just a plain piece of cardboard. You can usually find these in dumpsters, right? So this is upcycling at its best. Um, a piece of regular cardboard is fine to use as your canvas, okay? Um, 
So, and my dogs are going crazy. Sorry about that, you guys. Hopefully they'll be quiet after a minute. Um, but most, uh, most of you are gonna use actual canvas to paint on. All right, so here is a piece of canvas. These are the ones that Hartnell is providing for you so you guys can, uh, and oils can pick them up at my bookstore in downtown Salinas. I've got, um, these are uh, is canvas stretched over cardboard, basically. <clears throat> so it's fairly thin. And if we were in class, we'd be making our own canvas. We'd have a wood frame that we would staple actual canvas material, fabric, over and then gesso it to, to seal it. <clears throat> so that's how we would be doing for that. So <clears throat> you can use your canvas that we're gonna get you for class. You can use a, a piece of wood, like a panel of wood or, um, uh, what's it? Uh, um, can't even think of the word now. <laughs> um, any kind of wood panel. Uh, and cardboard is fine. Um, watercolor paper, that's pretty much it. You need to have 140 pound cold pressed water paper, watercolor paper is gonna be your best bet for this, for the watercolor class. But oils, you have a little more choice. Um, canvas like this, stretched canvas, wood panels or cardboard. Um, for watercolors, it's important to have a board, right, to staple or tape your paper onto. You can see on this, this one is an old, uh, you think it's like an old cupboard door. You can see there's still some hinges on it. Um, so like, right, you can use pretty much anything. Um, and you can see that I've stapled my, can, my, my paper onto the board. See, there's some staples there, right? I have it two-sided. Okay. I'm gonna give you a demo on how to do this, so don't, don't worry about learning how to do it just yet. So I'll show you how to do that. But that ends our, our very basic <laughs> demo or lecture on your materials to paint on, right? Your surface that you're going to paint on. And in a lot of, um, a lot of art, they call it a ground. So they'll call it your ground. So these are some interchangeable words. It's a canvas or a ground. The ground is more descriptive because a ground could either be actual canvas or it could be a wood panel or, or a piece of cardboard, right? Or it could be a, a paper ground. Right, like so what we're using is watercolor paper. So the ground is the, is the, I would say, technical official term. Uh, but informally, we often just say canvas, like that's what we're painting on. Even if it's not really canvas, it's paper, right? So watercolor paper. All right, that concludes our basic ground lecture. And hope you guys stay grounded. I'll see you next class.